my journey started as far back as when I was still in school. Um, I went to school in the southern suburbs of Johannesburg and I used to stay in Soweto with my parents. But what I found was there was this, there was this big gap between what was happening in um, suburban schools versus what was happening in the townships. And I think what I then discovered was the lack of general knowledge that was happening in township schools. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I think it kills a lot of innovation when it comes to young people within townships. So throughout my, throughout my journey, I mean, I've done, I've done a whole lot of businesses. We used to host uh, matric dances for schools in, in townships. Um, and during that time, we were actually looking at what is possible within schools. Because I think we've got some 6,000 schools across the country. And I think these are untapped in terms of looking at potential to, I think, ultimately make money, but to, to give entrepreneurs a platform and almost like a, a safe haven where they can start um, you know, coming up with ideas. What gaps exist in terms of accessing corporate social responsibility grants? I think more than anything, people usually go to corporates looking for things that don't necessarily apply to the corporate's core business. Um, and that's where I think they become a lot more stuck because the corporate will tell them, look, we're in ICT, but you're looking for something that's financial services related. So I think understanding the environment, understanding who you're going to target, I think should be the first, the first thing. And I think secondly, bring in a little bit of innovation. You know, I think, I think the guys who are sitting, the CSI managers, Yes, they, they clued up, but I think they also rely on the NPOs to come up with, with, with slightly more innovative ways that they can, one, invest the money, but two, um, create volunteer opportunities so that it's not just somebody handing you a check and, and that's it, but there's, there's some kind of continuity in terms of you receiving the money and ultimately doing something that impacts the entire project. I'm an artist, uh, cultural practitioner if I can put it that way and I'm currently a student and um, what's happening at universities right now is very interesting right um, there's discussion about decolonization um, and deracialization there's a lot of issues um, and from a from an artistic perspective I have a few solutions um, that speak to events that that transform our youth particularly um, but it's been increasingly difficult to communicate the value of that um, because it's not at its core economic, yet obviously we need funds to make this, these events happen. So um, how, how, in your experience, um, can, can, can you advise um, you know, people like myself that have identified our product as not necessarily economic, but as more cultural, more intrinsic in value? How do you then twist that and speak the language of corporates that you'd like to approach to fund your event? I'll actually answer that um, because I have a perfect example of an artist that came to us. He's somebody that actually takes pictures, you know, so he's an artist, you know, he takes pictures at our events and he had his first art exhibition a couple of months ago and he came to, to me and said, Matsi, I need sponsorship, I need a donation for me to actually be able to pull this thing through. And I said, you're using the wrong language, first of all because you're amongst, he was actually taking pictures at a venture capital um, event. So he was amongst a lot of venture capitalists. And I basically said, if you chose to tell me that you are looking for investment opportunities, speak their language, right? Because what you do is art, and art can be seen as an investment opportunity. So you could sell your art as an investment opportunity and say, this is the value of what I'm creating. I mean, I ended up buying two of his pictures that actually I think it costs me north of 20,000 rands for two of his pictures because of how he presented the opportunity and he said, this is investment art. I might be an unknown artist at this point in time, but look at my ability to put out this you know, photographic exhibition. And his pictures are beautiful. So it's how you choose to use your language speak their language because when somebody says sponsorship donation you think charity and a lot of times people engage with people that run a lot of charities but if somebody says this is a piece of art it's an investment invest in it this is how much it's going to cost 
I actually, there are times when I say, did I really have to pay so much money for these pictures? But when I look in my living room, they're there and they're beautiful. And I feel like it's my first investment and I actually invested in an artist. So choose your language, engage with people that run businesses and then ask them to, how, how can I actually present this as a value proposition than just supporting charity? And I think that's where social entrepreneurship has to go so that it's, um, it's, 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 it's essentially sustainable. See yourself as adding value, not necessarily wanting to take cap in hand. So it's a language that you use. It's how you present yourself and how you present your opportunity. I think, yeah, um, that's my two cents worth as somebody who's not necessarily a social entrepreneur, but I engage a lot with people that have a passion to work with entrepreneurs or to work with communities. But a lot of the times when they present themselves, it's like, you know, I don't want to hear that word charity. I don't want to hear donation or sponsorship. It's like, I want to hear what value am I going to get out of this and why should I give you even a rant?